James Alfred White, who would write and become famous as the author and vet James Harriet, was born in Sunderland, England in 1916 and grew up in Glasgow, Scotland, the only son of a ship plater and a dressmaker. Alf was really an animal guy from the start. As a boy, he would take his dog for walks in the Scottish countryside and watch it play with his friend's dogs. And later he wrote, I was intrigued by the character and behavior of these animals. I wanted to spend my life working with them if possible. And then when he was 12, he read an article about veterinary surgeons and started to imagine having a career treating sick animals. Two years later in 1930, he heard the principal of Glasgow Veterinary College give a lecture at his high school, and that's when Alf decided he wanted to become a vet. It's worth noting that Alf's first tries at becoming both a writer and a vet were a little rough. It took him six years to finish a five-year degree program because of health issues, but also because, according to the New York Times, he failed many of his classes on the first try. Surgery, pathology, physiology, histology, even animal husbandry, which he failed twice. Aren't you glad he didn't give up? Alf's first veterinary job was in Sunderland, but then he decided he'd rather work in the countryside and moved to the village of Thirsk, near the Yorkshire Dales. There, a veterinary surgeon named Donald Sinclair was heading into service with the Royal Air Force, this was during World War II, and needed someone to see to all the local animals while he was away. And Alf White got the job. When Sinclair returned, he asked Alf to stay on and the two worked together. In fact, aside from a stint in the Air Force himself, Alf White continued in veterinary practice for 50 years. During that time, of course, he got married. In fact, he famously took his bride out doing TB testing on cattle during their honeymoon and had a couple of kids. Here they are all grown up. His son, James, followed him into veterinary practice and his daughter, Rosie, became a doctor for humans. But as I said, while his veterinary practice grew and he fell in love with the people and animals of the Yorkshire Dales, writing success didn't come right away. He had to learn to hone his craft, figure out who his subjects were, and how to approach telling his stories, all while working six and a half days a week as a vet. James Harriet's first two books called If Only They Could Talk and Let Sleeping Vets Lie didn't do that great. Some say because of the cartoony illustrations, but after being combined, rebranded, and renamed as All Creatures Great and Small, a name taken from an old hymn, these stories were a huge hit. Now you might think his books are his biographies, stories he wrote about things that really happened and people that really lived, but that's only partially true. He loosely based the cases and characters in his books on things that happened in the 1960s and 70s, although he set them during an earlier time period and, and, of course, renamed everyone in just about every place in the stories, even as we know, himself and his wife. Helen was really named Joan. And in this picture, we see the real Siegfried, Donald Sinclair, on the left, with his brother Brian, known in the books as Tristan, on the right, of course with Alf White in the middle. As for himself, Alf needed a pen name because at the time, for ethical reasons, vets weren't supposed to promote themselves through any kind of advertising. So he chose the name of a local football goalie, Jim Harriet, as his pseudonym. Most sources agree that the books are really novels rather than biographies, about 50% fiction. And James Harriet, the author, did well. His eight books have sold 80 million copies worldwide and have twice been made into a television series. And as you can imagine, in the village of Thirsk, which is Derby, he's a pretty big deal. Lots and lots of people travel there to see the World of James Harriet Museum, where he lived and worked, and where he wrote his books. If you go there, you can see the surgery and sitting room, dispensary, his phone, parts of the first series television stage set. James Harriet is so beloved and celebrated that he's had a train named after him. The library at Glasgow Veterinary College bears his name. He's got his own statue. And somewhere out in space is a minor planet called 4124 Harriet. But actually, Alf was a pretty private person who didn't love to be the center of attention, being a celebrity. It doesn't give me any kick at all, he once said. It's not my world. I wouldn't give up being a vet if I had a million pounds. 
I'm too fond of animals. And he was always aware, he says, that his clients and their animals weren't particularly impressed by his success as an author. He once said, if a farmer calls me with a sick animal, he couldn't care less if I were George Bernard Shaw, who was a very famous playwright. But we are certainly impressed. We love his stories about his life as a vet in the Yorkshire Dales and about all the creatures, great and small, who call them home.